All these notes are actually available on GitHub if you want to get involved and actually check this demo out for yourself. Uh, and I'm going to jump pasting straight... the link to that now. Yep. Um, so I'm going to jump in a little bit down here um, and I'll just explain briefly before I actually get into the demonstration what Druxt is. Um, and Druxt is a bridge between two frameworks with Drupal as a back end and Nuxt.js as a front end. So I'm not going to cover over too much what Drupal is today because I somewhat expect that um, the majority of the people here understand Drupal and have at least used it in some way. Uh, but Nuxt.js is a front end framework um, similar to Drupal in um, that it is quite modular. Uh, let me just change. I'm looking at Brian's face during all of this. So I'm going to pin myself. Okay, great. Uh, so Drux.js is a framework between both of these two other frameworks. Um, and I am just going to jump into Drupal. So I've set up a Drupal 9 installation with the Umami demo um, install profile. And I've installed or I've downloaded two modules, the Drux.js module, which is available on Drupal.org uh, and the JSON API views module. So I'm just going to go ahead and enable these two modules. At the moment, we are just looking at a standard install. Nothing has yet been done. So we'll install these two. And then I am going to go and configure that. So this will just take a second. Now do feel free to jump in when I am clearly not talking, that's fine. Okay, in case anyone's back. thinking but not asking the question, this also works with Drupal 8. Yes, this works with any um, Drupal 8 point eight above, I believe, code base. Um, and the, the Drux.js module that's being installed, uh, it simply adds a permission and a couple workarounds for some things that the Drupal JSON API doesn't do. So the permission that it adds is here, access Drux JSON API resources. Um, and this can be applied to any role that you have. Um, we're going to use anonymous here because if you were to uh, use any of the other roles, you would actually have to go and set up OAuth 2. Um, we have not got that ready for demo, but that is available. So we're just going to go ahead and save that there. And now we're actually done with everything that I'm going to do in Drupal. I'll just drop you back here so you can actually see this is the content of the demo Umami page. All right, so I'm just going to swap over now to Nuxt.js. Um, I've pre-prepared some stuff here as well. So this is our Nuxt.js installation, and we just have a couple packages ready to go um, and an empty configuration file. So I'm going to jump into there. I'll also show you here we have an empty pages directory and a node modules uh, directory, and that's it. That's our code base. Uh, so I'm just going to grab some pre-prepared configuration here, and we're going to drop that in place. Now, this is Nuxt.js configuration. And what it's doing is it's installing two modules into our Nuxt.js uh, code base. The Nuxt.js proxy module, um, which simply handles proxying any of Drupal's files back to the back end and the Druxt module. Uh, so we just need to go ahead and grab our base URL here, drop that into the configuration and now everything Nuxt is done. So fingers crossed, we're going to execute our Nuxt command and that's going to start building our front end. So we come across here and you can see Nuxt.js is doing what it needs to do and it's starting to build our bundles. And here we go. We have a Drux.js demonstration site up and running. And you can see straight away that we have content being displayed. So if we jump back across here, 
explore recipes across every type of occasion, ingredient and skill level, and four entities being displayed one after another. So I'm just going to jump across to here and give you a bit of a walkthrough of what's actually going on here. Uh, so on the right here, we have the view developer tools, and this allows us to see all of the Vue.js components that are currently being rendered to this page that we haven't really done anything other than drop in a configuration file. So looking at the root, um, the most, the first item we want to have a look at is our layout file here. And this is a layout component that the Nux.js uh, module has put in place for us. Sorry, the Nux.js application, um, followed by the Nux component itself. Uh, from there, Druxt has installed a wildcard router. So any requests to this application will, if it does not resolve to a page in Nuxt, it will fall back to this wildcard router. And what this router does is it goes off and it hits Drupal's decoupled router, which is a requirement of the Druxt.js Drupal module and it asks Drupal what we're looking at at this path. So in this case, we're looking at a Druxt view, um, which is provided by the JSON API views module. Um, and it is the front page, page one view. So we step in here to the Druxt view component, and this is provided by the Druxt views module. And that's provided that information that the Druxt router has gathered for us. But in addition to that, it also contains all the results for that particular view as JSON API resources. So we can have a look in here and we can see this is one of the entities that's being rendered here. In addition to that, it also has the Drupal view JSON API resource, which contains information such as the display options for page one, which has our header area and our content. So if you're familiar with um, Drupal development, you'll recognize the format here, format full HTML value, and there's some markup. And that's being provided by the view itself. I haven't done anything to any of the view configuration in Drupal. This is just as per Umami. So, the next thing the Druxt view component does is it iterates over all of those results and renders them out. So in this case, it's rendering out four Druxt entities. And each one of these entities contains the data that view, the Druxt view component has passed to it, um, including information such as the type of resource being a node recipe, the UUID and the display mode. So as well as that, and the entity information, it takes that display mode and it loads in a schema file and that's provided by the Drux schema module. And this file contains all of the information that's available um, that Drupal has said it needs to display this particular display mode. So we can see that there's one field here, which is the field media image and this is to be displayed as a responsive three by two view mode. Uh, so we step in here and that's been passed through. So it's iterated over all of those fields and we now have our Druxt field component, which is uh, as per Druxt entity is provided by the Druxt entity module. Um, so this component contains the specific items that it will be rendering um, and in this case, it is a entity reference. Uh, so it contains the type of resource and the UUID for that particular resource. And it also contains just the targeted schema information for this current field. So we'll step in there and we're actually resolving here to a targeted component for this type of field, which is again provided with the Druxt entity module. Um, it is the Druxt field entity reference entity view uh, component and that takes that information and then it in turn passes to Druxt entity again because this is an entity reference and that in turn to another field and finally to our 
finally resolved field that renders the actual markup of this item here. Uh, so that's the primary demo um, because I think that covers the majority of what this tool is. There is a lot more I can show. Um, like Murray said, there's, there's actually too much to talk about in a single session. Um, but I will go ahead and I will jump to something that we've pre-prepared earlier so I can explain a little bit about the theming system. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the Druxt Theme Umami Bootstrap uh, module. And I'm just gonna kill this process for a second. I'm also gonna go ahead and grab uh, a layout that I have pre-set up for you. And we'll drop that in here. And assuming everything is all good, I am just going to run MPX Nuxt again. And we'll reload that. We'll actually jump in here and we'll reload this. Fingers crossed. Okay. There we go. So this is a more fleshed out um, demonstration of what you can do with Drux.js. Uh, so I'll walk you through a few of the changes that have happened here. So in this case, the layout is our own component, um, which I can take you through the actual code of shortly, um, but I'll walk through it. So we're using the bootstrap view module inside of the Druxt theme Umami Bootstrap module. And it is wrapping our block region up the top here. So the Druxt block region component, which is provided by the Druxt block module. And what it does is it goes off to Drupal's JSON API and it says for the header region, with the Umami theme configuration in Drupal, what blocks do we have for this particular path? And that returns this block and this other block, which actually isn't showing, but um, there are reasons for that. I can demonstrate that a little bit later if need be. Um, and that's done for multiple block regions in the page. So, we now have a more feature complete site that's being powered by Drupal itself. So we have blocks, view blocks, a view of entities, a view of items, and another couple blocks down here. Uh, we can click into one of our entities here and we see that was a relatively fast experience. Our breadcrumbs are not currently rendering, but you know, what's a demo without a couple issues. Um, so if we had our breadcrumbs, I could demonstrate the speed of actually going back and forth a piece of content that has already actually been rendered. Um, because as this is a, uh, this is running on Nux.js, we take advantage of all of the internal navigation and, um, and we have a lot of our content pre-cached in a Vuex store. So as we navigate through the site, we can see all of the schemas that have been lazy loaded in as well as all of our uh, routes that we have currently hit, all of the entities that have currently been loaded in. So I think I'll leave the demo there.